As the race for 2020 heats up, Senator Elizabeth Warren is receiving a major progressive endorsement. Earlier this week, the Working Families Party threw its support behind the Massachusetts senator. The endorsement, however, did create some outcry, prompting WFP to issue this explanation, saying in part, our endorsement of Senator Warren does not dis diminish our respect for Senator Sanders. And to be clear, we are going to be relentlessly positive about both of them in the months ahead. Here to shine some light on their endorsement process and to discuss WFP's thoughts on the Democratic primary is National Director for the Working Families Party, Maurice Mitchell, friend of the show. Great to see you, sir. It's a pleasure to see you. Um, you made some news this week. Absolutely. <laughs> did you? Ex did you expect the reaction to be what it was because I mean part of the the context here is that mm -hmm. WFP endorsed Senator Sanders in a big way back yeah. in 2016 it was a fairly overwhelming vote and so there was a lot of surprise and a lot of disappointment from Senator Sanders supporters to see it go to Elizabeth Warren were you surprised by that so number one it was an endorsement and so what we anticipated is that there would be people inside and outside the party that would be disappointed. That's the sure. nature of an endorsement. I could tell you that, you know, we're really proud of the process because we included um, over months consultation with all of the component parts of our party, really rigorous debate and, and conversations, like really intense debates and conversations and long form interviews with the candidates. And we gave more clout to our online membership than ever before. Yeah. And so we couldn't be more proud with the conclusion. and. And we understand that there's good faith folks inside and outside the party that are disappointed. That's the nature of endorsement. Now we want to pivot to the organizing. Yeah, well, and I encourage people, you, you all posted a Medium post that went through the whole process, explained how you thought about it, explained how it all worked, which I really encourage people to go and look at it. And, and I don't want to fixate just on the process in the end. Sure. We want to move forward and talk about what WFP is going to do. The one thing that people fixated on, though, is the fact that the membership vote tally was made public in 2016, mm -hmm. but not this time around. Mm -hmm. What was the thinking behind that decision? And do, did you even have that breakdown to know which way the membership voted versus which way the delegates voted? So you could read the Medium post. It goes into detail around yeah. our thinking, around our theory of change, which is basically about the fact that our members, which are both our grassroots leadership that make up the party in all, all of our states, as well as folks online, we consider them both members, and we never intended to from the very beginning, and we communicated with all of the campaigns, and we it, it communicated with excruciating detail to our base uh, that we, we would never break up the component parts of our vote or, or look at the component parts of our membership as being different mm -hmm. or have any dis distinction. And we stand by that, and I encourage anybody to look at the post. And of course, I want to pivot to the big news, which sure. is the fact that we endorsed Elizabeth Warren and, and why we did and why we're so excited about the organizing of reaching everyday people, people who are neither in Bernie's camp or Warren's camp, and that need to be organized into big, bold, progressive change. That's how we're going to defeat the corporate forces in the Democrat and Republican Party and how we're going to defeat the ultra-right. Um, and the Trump movement. So last last question on this piece about the process um, that I think is important. You've been the subject personally yeah. of some incredibly ugly and completely unacceptable attacks. Um, I mean, first, are you okay? And mm -hmm. and second, where is that where is that coming from? So I would say this: um, the there's been good faith uh, debate and conversations on the internet, yeah. and. I'm here for all of it. You know, public leadership is about public accountability right. and engaging in those conversations. Right. Also, there has been some of the most vile and disgusting racist and sexist attacks against myself, against Nalini Stamp, uh, another leader in our party, and many, many of our staff people, everyday working people who are trying to make this world better, and that's unacceptable. And I'm not a snowflake liberal. If you come for my people, we're going to come for you. And so for wherever that's coming from, it might be a troll farm in Russia, it might be a fever swamp of some sort of cultish people who aren't attached to any campaign. Some 4chan thing It might be whatever. coming from the 4chan sort of dark web. Wherever yeah. those folks are coming from, um, you know, they don't represent the movement that we're trying to build. And I'm really happy that folks in the Sanders campaign said that these people don't represent no. our campaign at all. And I think that that's the proper tone. We want to build a movement that includes Sanders supporters and uh, Warren supporters who are pushing uh, the Democratic Party to the people and are pushing for bold, progressive change. We think that 
it's incumbent on all of those supporters to organize all those people out there. There's millions of people who are still trying to figure things out, everyday people who aren't close political observers that need the appeal of this big progressive change. Right. So what is the plan? Who are Great. you all going after? What are you seeing on the ground? Great. So there was a recent poll, like this is just one data point, point yeah. but there was a recent NBC poll that showed that uh, Senator Warren um, was number one with Latinx folks and only second uh, with black folks uh, to Biden. Right now, it's one data point, but if any of those uh, cross tabs have any validity, it means that she's appealing in a multiracial fashion to yeah. everyday working people. Right. right, and so we want to extend that appeal to my cousin, to all the cousins, right, who aren't close political observers who aren't glued to Twitter, who haven't figured out necessarily where they line up, who don't necessarily identify um, with, the, with the cultural parameters of being woke, mm. but who are working people, good, decent working people who are just trying to get by, and we need to bring them into the fold. So our organizing is not going to be to uh, convince somebody who's already firmly in one camp to be in another camp, right. but it's to reach out to those folks and build meaningful relationships, connection, meaning, and belonging to build a mass movement around this change, because the Working Families Party has never been about a particular candidate or a particular campaign. We're about building a vibrant movement around this change that we've been committed to for years. I saw that poll. I think it was the NBC News, Wall yeah. Street Journal poll. And I thought that was really significant, because it was Senator Warren's best showing, especially among Latinx folks. Mm -hmm. um, is that a trend that you see developing? And what is she doing that is sort of having appeal in that segment? So this is one thing that I'll say about um, Senator Warren. Yeah. Right, I think she is uniquely positioned and has this unique ability. Um, she's almost like the teacher. She could become the teacher in chief. I think the fact that she had so much experience as a middle school teacher allows her to be able to sort of demystify a lot of our politics and condense a lot of these complex concepts into common sense ideas that everyday people understand. And she has an amazing appeal when you're actually in front of her or in front of a crowd of 20,000 people, like the one I was at uh, on Monday in New York. She's connecting with folks, right? And she's able to talk about this stuff that, you know, years ago I was only hearing in, like, you know, in debates in, in smoky dorm rooms right. with everyday people, like my cousin, our cousins, right? And to me, the proper role of any proper left in any country is not to consolidate the d various factions of the left, it's to organize the working class. Yeah. And so we want to do that work of organizing the working class, and we think that Elizabeth Warren's appeal is uniquely positioned to organize the everyday working class. Which is interesting, because, I mean, up to this point, if you look at the breakdown, as you go higher on the income scale, yep. as you go higher on the education scale, you find increasing Warren mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you see that dynamic shifting? And, and also, what is WFP's role sure. in helping that dynamic to shift? What does the endorsement mean for her? So WFP, our bread and butter, our North Star, our base, and my commitment, especially since I, start, I, I started as the national director last year, right. is to form WFP into an organizing engine to build a multiracial working class sort of coming together of everyday people around our politics. And not small politics, but the big change that Elizabeth Warren is talking about. Right. So our collaboration with her campaign is gonna be all about that. We're gonna be reaching out to the constituencies that have been left behind by Democrats and Republicans. You know, there's an elitism in, you know, you were talking before about these green rooms, right. right? There's an elite conversation that happens in green rooms, that happens, you know, in elite circles in metropolitan areas with, you know, a lot of the folks in think tanks and other places. Um, and they're the ones that are issuing a lot of the political strategy, yep. both Republicans and Democrats. Right. And so millions of people are missing from that conversation. We think we have a unique role in the, in the Warren campaign in order to engage those people and in a respectful conversation around their lives and how that connects to the politics and their need to defeat the far right in November 2020 and also defeat the corporate forces and the Republican uh, and the Democratic. See, yeah. sometimes it's hard to, to, Some, the, to know the <laughs> distinction. <laughs> right. But the corporate forces and the Democratic party that are convinced that the only thing that's wrong in our politics is the fact that Donald Trump is president. Right. And we we understand that there are structural problems in our economy and our democracy and also problems in our politics and a, and a 
a conspiracy almost between the, the elite class of the Democratic and Republican Party that created the environment for Trump to get elected. Right. He is not an aberration, and it was a long road to get here. He's also not an accident. That's um, right. Maurice, thank you so much. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. Congrats on a big week. Thank you. Next on Rising, Kamala Harris might have jokingly said she was effing moving to Iowa. But what is her actual strategy in the state? And we here on Rising have brought up Joe Biden's many misstatements and gaffes in the past. But are all the criticisms of him fair? We're going to ask Team Rising these questions and more next.